Hey folks, how you doing? Cat Market, Kid Coach East Outdoors. This episode, trust your machine, all right? I just gotta show you a couple of quick videos on the water footage. I was out fishing the other day, came over some serious schools of fish, dropped the camera on it, and just wanted to show you how these fish look on the machine, how they look below, how you can differentiate big fish to small fish, and also how these fish now seek refuge in the low part of the water column where the current is ripping high and they're staying low in the structure where they can get a little uh, break in the action with that current and when they come up and they'll start to feed on fish, all right? It's tough, I've been explaining this for years, how it, how it works, but now I kind of catch it on film where you can kind of see how these fish are behaving in the lowest portion of the water column, all right? So something to watch, keep Coach Chase outdoors. Let's take this stuff for a ride. All right, so the key thing we're gonna see here right now is you're gonna see as the camera now comes up in the water column, you're gonna see all the uh, aquatic debris coming through, just the marine debris. You'll see the algae, all the other stuff, the plankton, all that stuff's coming, ripping through the water column, all right? As it gets higher in the water column. As it gets lower, as when you see this um, jig hit the ground, you'll see that it's, it's almost still down there. We're dealing with a very weird drift here, all right? My, the current is going one direction and the wind is coming in another direction. That's wind against tide. Wind against tide. That's exactly how I feel, right? Wind against tide is not your friend when it comes to fishing, but you have to deal with it and you have to adjust. It is what it is. Mother Nature is not going to play nice. It's Mother Nature, all right? So as you can see now, these fish now are down the lower in the water column. They're really not struggling much to stay in that rip because of they're very low and they're on the bottom in the water column, all right? And this is how you can explain it, that Wind is blowing and you're you're laying down behind a four foot fence, all right? Huh? If you're laying down behind the four foot fence and the wind is blowing, here's the four foot fence, the wind is blowing, and you're laying down here, it's not you're not gonna feel anything, all right? And if you stick your head above that fence, your hair's gonna get parted, all right? You're almost gonna have to immediately brush your hair. Let's put it that way, right? That head comes above the fence, you gotta brush your hair, right? Or it's getting brushed for you. So that's my that's the theory here. The wind is coming, it has to go over the fence. And that's where these fish are down here in this lee here. They're in there, and that's what they're doing. They're staying in that lee, if that rip behind the rocks, and if everything that walks comes by them, you'll see them walk coming up in the column. All right, they're going to come up in the column, look at it, either eat it or go back down. And that's what you see in this underwater footage. These fish now were coming up in the column. This is how you can see that they're coming up in the column when you look at your machine. Instead of a boomerang doing the natural boomerang, you're going to see a return kind of come up like this. And that's merely a fish coming up and down in the water column. All right, so that's what he's doing. He's coming up grab and bait and you'll see him shoot down. Usually returns are boomerangs like that. And what happens with the boomerang, how the boomerang is formed is when the first, when the fish comes into the cone of the sim, of, of the sim rat, it could be any machine, but as it comes into the cone of the echo, it catches it on the, the leading edge of the, of the cone. And as it comes in, the signal gets stronger when it's under the, the strongest part of the cone itself from echo is the dead bean's middle of the cone. All right, so that's when you have the top of that boomerang. And then as it leaves the cone, it kind of tails off again. So it kind of does this big arch. And in the middle of the arch is the strongest part of the signal. And that's where you have the big boomerang. The, little, the bigger the fish, the bigger the boomerang. All right, this stuff also differentiates between different types of chirp, all right? Uh, I believe this chirp that I'm using is like 95 kilohertz to 155 kilohertz. I'm not positive about that. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're wrong. I think it's 95 kilohertz. The medium chirp on the Simrad is 95 kilohertz to 155 kilohertz. That's 60, 60 different frequencies going down at one time. All right. So that's where you're going to get these beautiful. You can look in this video right here. You can see all these different fish now that are being separated because they're getting hit by multiple signals at once. So that as, as the one signal goes up, the other one's already hitting that fish and it's giving it a very good return. Very, it's, it's called target separation. I say it a million times in my videos, but that's exactly what it is. As, as the fish comes through the beginning, leading into that cone, that's when the signal's a little weaker. As it comes in, you'll see that it catches the strongest part of the, of the signal and then it comes back down. That's how the sound wave hits it and that, that's what designates the fish, the boomerang, all right? That's how that works. It comes into the leading edge of the cone, hits the strongest part of the signal in the middle, brings that, that cone strong and then it tails off again. There's your boomerang, all right? Some people have 
And this is what I'm going to tell you right now. Some people have, the, have literally a picture of a fish. That's not happening. Ay, Dios mío, esos pescados están loco. Don't let anybody see you doing that on your fish, on your machine, all right? It's just not good. It's not loco, loco. Go back just to regular echo returns. That's how you're going to get a truer um, signal, all right? The, the other one's nice and say, oh, there's a fish right there, but it really doesn't exactly tell you what it is. So if your machine's set up for that, lose the fish ID stuff. That's for gazy, as far as I'm concerned. If you like it, keep it. It really sucks. But the boomerang now is telling you when that thing is coming into the it, you, it, the fish does not let you do that. So it doesn't show you how it comes into the leading edge of the cone and leaves it and gives you that boomerang. All right, so that's it. All right, folks, now it's time to go to the old giveaway that hat. Coming in this box right here. Who's going to win it? Let's go. Let's scroll through the old comments of the last video and see who wins this thing. You're going to, this is just like exciting stuff right now. What? All right, so who we got? Who we got? Let's go through this. Let's go through this. Let me speed it up a little bit. Go back a little bit. Let me speed up. There's our winner right there. Matt Davis. Congratulations, pal. Email me at kickcoachies at gmail.com where you want me to ship that bad boy. All right. Matt's comment. Hashtag con on. Dig it. And he says, thanks for the fact-based entertainment. All right. That's all this channel is about. All right. We throw some facts in there. We try to help you guys catch some fish. Tell you how fish behave. And then you guys put that together for yourselves, all right? By no means are we the best fishermen in the world. We'll never ever say that. We kind of have a couple laughs out here. That's what Kid Cochise Outdoors is all about. That's what the con is all about. Okay, so they should made a mooch, all right? Let's get back to some underwater footage, though. Okay, folks, as you can see here, I am drifting kind of backwards into the rip. You can see the water starting to stand up. And uh, I look over the machine, I can see it's loaded up with fish there. So I want to just jump over there, grab the camera, and drop the camera in as fast as I can. See if I can land in that school. Sure enough, I almost land on top of a fish, all right? All right, this may get you sick a little bit, but I'm kind of jigging this thing, kind of moving the jig a little bit, and the fluke goes right after, right out of the gates, all right? I shouldn't be doing that because I have the camera on it, and I'm not crazy about catching fish, and God knows what I could hook into. But of course, the sea robin comes over here and just snatches and hooks up, so I bring him up. The key thing to note here is if you look at the top of the water surface, I'm kind of, this this current is really ripping. It's, it's, it's running out, and it's heading to the east. But what's happening is the wind is blowing the opposite direction, so my my presentation is very slow on the water. It's, it's just one of those wind against tide issues. You're thinking that that jig should be ripping through the water column across the bottom, but it's not. It's being pushed the opposite way. All right, folks, now I see another stack of fish. I dropped the camera on it, and you can find, kind of see these fish as I'm dropping down the water column starting to appear. And that's basically how you see them. They're coming from the bottom. They're seeing this offering from above. They're coming to look at it and they drop up. But take note of this one bluefish getting attacked by a bass right here. I'll play it again. This bluefish goes after the bait, but the schoolie bass just pushes him away. It's pretty cool. Very dominant down there, the bass. Guess a dish. Hey, how about me, kid? What? Oh, snap. That's Dan Morgan right there. This is kind of shout out of the week. Dan trolled this monster girl up on the uh, troll outside of Debs, and he's on the Navy Diver. It's an album out there on the South Shore. If anybody sees that album on the South Shore, scream kick coach cheese for me, all right? Tell the boys to say congratulations on their con. Oh, shout out shout of out. the week. Huh? All right, so let's go back to the quick uh, underwater footage here. These fish, again, are coming from below now. They're going nuts. You got everything is attacking this thing right now. So it just goes to show you that all these species of fish are really low in the column. They come up, they look at what they have to offer. Now you have the porgies in there. The porgies are starting to make a mess in there. And uh, we have to say a little on these porgies, but you can see those fish are really down below. You can just see the top back of them. And what they'll do is they'll just kind of swim around. They'll come up in the column, look at the bait, say hello to it. Uh, smack at it. There wasn't, they weren't crazy crazy about it because a couple inches away was the stupid camera, but they weren't crazy about attacking it. They were very curious about it, but the camera is not the best thing in the world for them to look at. You know, this is just a weird presentation. I'm not jigging it. They're kind of just laying their limp in the uh, in the water column. So if I had more action to it, you would have definitely much more strikes. If I really jigged that, so if you had a bucktail or something like that with a pork grind on it, and you just drifted through, through there and really kept it low to bottom and worked that action really quick, you'd have a million fish with this. The reason I'm not catching these fish as much because I'm not jigging it. If I jigged that, this camera would be spinning around. You guys would be seasick. You'd be taking drama me and watching this video. So all I'm doing is kind of showing how these fish now will hold in the bottom of the water column. If they see something above them, they're going to come up and see it, but not going to stay up there too long. And then they're just going to come back down. These guys now, the porgies, they're relentless. You know that. And uh, 
they're just gonna eat the bait and I'm gonna have to pull a porgy up and that's the end of that video, all right? All right, so folks, this, the moral to the story here is trust your machine. If you see fish like that, drop on them. They're there, it's, it's exactly what it is. I just wanted to show you what it looks on the machine and how it looks in real life with the camera. So I hope this video helps you out. Again, work those rips. As you go into that rip, a rip now is basically how that's formed now. I have an outgoing tide in me where I'm fishing over in Old Field Point there. I call it the Old Field Rip. As that goes into shallower water, the water has nothing to do. It has no place to go but up. So in other words, if if this is how deep it is, and here's the, is where the, the rip is, this water's coming in here. It has to go up this wall here. So what it does, it pushes water straight up, and that's when water starts to stand up at the top of the column. That's basically what a rip does. And what it does is it messes those fish up as they come up that, that wall. It comes over into the rip, and then these things are all messed up, all right? You can see that if they're higher in the column, they just spun around, and these fish now will stay below in that calm water that you saw in the bottom, and then they just pop up and start grabbing stuff. That's what they did immediately when they saw my jig drop. They said, hey, that looks like something interesting. And it took, obviously, all their attention. They all kind of looked at it. If I was bucktailing, like naturally bucktailing with a little piece of floral on there, you, would, you know, you catch all day long. Hunters catching fish like nuts, but that's not what this is about. This is just to kind of show you guys out there in the con. The con. Watch, right? The bushes. Yeah, okay. Sometimes I'm going to throw fire. I have to throw fire into my videos. All right? But that's just out there to show the con that that's what things are going on there. I appreciate you guys watching the videos. If you have a second, subscribe and like if you like. All right? That's all I'm asking. Comment below. Congratulations to Matt Davis again on winning that uh, hat. He's the con shout out this week. Hey, kid, win my ball sword. All right? That's what it comes down to. You guys want your con pictures in there? Send again to kidcoachies at gmail.com. We'll throw some con pictures up there all right season start and i'll see some striped bass going there all right what else what else what else we have today it's gonna do it i think hope this guy hope this footage helped you guys out hope it made you understand how fish stage in structure and just how you can picture the bottom of the sea floor the difference in below structure the, the lowest part of the water column to as you walk up in that water column again picture that as you're hiding behind the fence in a windstorm and you lift your head up over the fence you gotta brush your hair. Basically, that that's basically in a nutshell. All right, it's it's structure gives these fish a lee, and they can kind of hang out and just mill around like no issues down there until they start to see what's going on. These fish will f uh, these fish will feed visually, and they'll just jump up in the column, grab what they want, and go back down into into the uh, calm water. That's all it's about. That's how you should identify these fish. That's fish behavior 101. Case of Deej and Made a Mooch. Thanks for watching, Kid Cheese. Chubby kids gotta go.